Greetings, listeners. I am your host and Game Master this evening, Zach Barrett. And welcome to this Twisted Gear Studios production of Spacers, our Starfinder actual play cast. And now, please enjoy. The peoples of the Pack Worlds expand ever further into the vast to find new people and search for their long lost history. The Gap holds many secrets for all peoples of the galaxy, an unexplained period of time where no memories or evidence of what occurred exists in any found world or system. All any being in the known galaxy remembers is the god Triune and his ascension to godhood. As the Gap ended and the modern age began, Triune gifted to the peoples of the galaxy space flight through the drift pocket of extra-dimensional space that granted spacefarers the ability to cross vast distances in a fraction of the time that their traditional technologies would allow. This brought many races to the Pack World system, the peaceful but secluded Kasatha, the timid Sheeran looking to live away from their former race, the vile Swarm, and the war-driven Vesk in their imperial conquest of the galaxy. After centuries of fighting in the modern age, the Vescarium and the new Pack Worlds were brought together in peace as the Swarm previous rulers of the Sheeran before a virus granted their freedom from the Swarm's hive mind, attacked both systems and fought together for mutual survival. Now, all eyes are on the stars. Spacefarers and adventurers move ever further into the vast, searching for knowledge and glory. One such system on the edge of what's known, the Autumn System. One of four primary star systems that ignite the Four Seasons Nebula with its four large colored stars. The autumn star glows a deep orange over its only habitable planet, Polymon. A desert world that promised glory and historical significance upon its discovery five years ago now stands as a disappointment and a monument to one of the largest cons in recent memory. As the autumn sun crests over the edge of Polymon's atmosphere, a vessel flies over the planet, its destination unknown, its aim true, crew inspired, and wing severed as the ship spirals down into the expansive desert below and crashes in a pillar of black smoke. We start our adventure in a rather shanty town of Hov's Shore, named so for uh, two primary reasons. One, there's a bit of insanity avoidance for its proximity to the nearby aptly named, named Autumn Wastes, and two, people that lived there thought it was funny. No water in sight, no rain for years. It truly is the most ironic of town names. There is one central street along this entirely wooden village. There is pretty much only one thing to do in town, and that's to drink. However, most people that live in and around Hobbs Shore live in small farms of moisture captures a little bit outside the city. Autumn wastes named as such as there's no moisture to be captured in those wastes. However, one of those huts lives a rather recent member of the of the town of Hav Shore, a Sheeran. You wake up this fine day, and uh, what do you intend to do? I probably wake up, do a little bit of stretching, look at my colorings on the wall, make myself a cup of tea, and probably aim to go into town. All right, fantastic. Uh, as you be, as you commence your average everyday trek that you've been doing for the past while that you've been on po the planet of Polymon. You head towards the town of Havshore and um, not an uncommon sight has occurred. There is a bit of cleaning up from the streets as seems to have uh, a bar fight seems to have occurred in Haka's tavern the previous night. Again, not an unknown event to you, but um, still an event nonetheless. Probably the most exciting thing that's happened in town since the last bar fight that happened at Haka's tavern. And there you see Sheriff Bonda, a Lashunta, uh, Lashunta that is the pretty much the final word of law in this town, but is also impeccably lazy. And what is his name again? Uh, Sheriff Bonda. B-O-N-D-A? B-O-N apostrophe D-A. Oh. Welcome to sci-fi. <laughs> Apostrophes abound. Always Christmas. missing the apostrophes. I know, pretentious cassava. <laughs> I thought it was a Lashunta. Lashinta, that one. He's not a Kasapa. He's a Lashinta. <laughs> not all aliens look alike. No, I know. He's the one with the little things on his head. He doesn't have a thing about <laughs> his face. He's got little he looks like tattoos on his head. With the little things on his head. That's very funny. He's a short, stout, short, stout man. <laughs> okay. 
He's not shy to the beer. Fair enough. I will walk up to said sheriff and be like, good morning, Sheriff Santa. Uh, Bonta. Vanda. <laughs> uh, it looks like you had a lot of fun last night. Well, well, I mean, I didn't actually start dealing with it until this morning, but uh, who's going to fire me? <laughs> but um, I do got uh, a certain individual I'd like you to take a look at. Uh, got a little messed up in the bar fight last night, and I'd like to at least put a little bit of civic duty into helping them out. As But I can be of assistance, sir. I mean, come, come on this way. Uh, he takes you into his... Uh, this police station. Now, I, I use the term police station as loosely as possible. It is literally, it has four walls, two desks, one that has been vacant for a very long time as there is only just Sheriff Bonda, and two lonely jail cells, one of which is normally completely vacant, the other of which has a small cot and several personal belongings as Drunk Bob, another Sheeran, uh, member of your race, tends to regularly frequent there as he gets uproariously drunk every night and has simply just set up shop inside this jail cell. In that cell is Bob, the aforementioned drunk Sheeran. However, in the second commonly vacant cell, you do see um, a rather strange sight for this far out in the depths of the vast, a very large lizard, a Vesk individual. Um, Bob seems to be relatively unharmed. The Vesk, however, seems to have a bit of a, a scratch on the top of her head, having seemingly been suffered a blow from a beer bottle. Oh, my. Yo, Bob, you got a friend. Oh, you again. It's the pretentious bug. Oh, Bob, I don't know. You should be talking to, her like, to, talking to him like that. You know, you gotta, you gotta make friends in this world. Not everyone's as ugly as you are. That's not very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Bob, here we are again. I tell you, you just need some tea and good relaxation. <laughs> Is your tea have alcohol in it? No. Oh, well, I don't know. I'm, I'm just some dumb bug, but if it wasn't for, for alcohol, I probably wouldn't be having a great time. <clears throat> You're not getting through to this guy. Right. Seriously, sure. I've been trying all morning. Worst conversation I've had all day. Sheriff Bonda, who exactly I am I attending to today? Well, not Bob. He's just drunk. I'm, I'm sure that the cure for alcoholism isn't exactly found yet, but uh, this one over here, um, if you wouldn't mind taking a look and seeing how bad the head wound is, that'd be great. Oh. Not taking off anytime soon, Bonda. This is getting boring. Uh, since you started the fight? No. But <laughs> Let's... I'm glad you asked. Come on, man. Yeah. He was looking at me funny. I mean, I'm not going to just take it. What? It's for a few days. I got to keep law and order in my town. Now, you, right. keep, a, you keep an eye on this on this Vesk thing here. Uh, order. Right. One of the barns out a little bit south of town towards the uh, towards the port city says they found a, a nice hull. They, they pulled something in. So uh, I'm going to go check that out and... Uh, have a good day in there. Do you have a ship port? Like, is there any way that I could get, if I can just get out of your hair? I believe you've been locked in here for a few days, uh, sir. Ma'am? Ma'am. Ma'am. Who are you? Wow. Uh, my name is Cliptic. I am the resident medic. Awesome, Cliptic. Kind of thing. Type thing. Yes. Nice. I'm, oh, I'm in good hands, I guess. Right. Yeah. May yeah. I take a look at your head wound? Sure. Whatever, I've had worse. What brings what brings you out to this middle of uh, this dust bowl in the middle of nowhere? Oh, I am just a wanderer, and I like to help those around me. That's that's very sweet of you. I have, okay, that's cool. What well, makes no sense, but cool. <laughs> very nice. Is her wound as bad that I would have to spend some healing on no, her, or no, I can just kind of bandage good. her up and everything? Yeah, I'll say that just just through regular associating and spending time here. It's okay, so good. I'll just, like, clean up there the There might still be some glass in there. I don't know. Glass. I tell. <laughs> there were a lot of bottles being thrown. Things happen. Someone went through a window. I don't know. Well, you're very... <laughs> that part was actually kind of funny. <laughs> you're, very sit of a, you're a very sturdy individual, I see. You. Wrapping up the <laughs> head wound there. <laughs> So what? I, I've not seen you around here before. Not nah, probably won't see you here again if I get the chance to get lost. But uh, man, you gotta you gotta watch who you're working with sometimes. I mean, 
you think you know a guy and then you draw the short straw and you're not even there to draw st- draw the straw. I mean, like, you'd think there'd be some communication there, but meh. I don't know. I had these friends. We landed here. And then uh, I guess there wasn't enough room for, five, for six people in the ship when they left. And uh, well, here we are. Well, certainly, my dear, you take up two seats. <laughs> And with that, <laughs> and with, with calling her fat, we're going to Large. Merge. Just large. Large. You're fat. broad. You're very broad. Sturdy. I said she was sturdy. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah so that's, that's these two I, cents. I like using that word sturdy myself. Yeah. Like a brick house. Uh, <laughs> deep in the autumn wastes, a black pillar of smoke is erupting from over a sand dune. And oh, cresking over the top of the sand dune, walking away from the black pillar of smoke, is a goblin and a Yasuki. The goblin is crying right now. Bad Bessie! Oh, he shoves a moldy piece of fruit in his mouth from his pocket. Don't eat that! What's wrong, what's wrong with you? What did you do this time? She's ruined. She's ruined. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, she is. So let's get out of here before we die. This place doesn't look very hospitable. And this was all your fault, I just want to clarify. How it Greg fault? Greg flies. You were flying it! Here! To the ground! (laughs) Oh, lost for words, are ya? Use your words. Stupid, ugly furball. And yes. he just starts walking away, pulls out a I may be ugly, but I didn't crash the ship. Shoved it in his mouth. I want both of you to roll survival checks, please. <laughs> <laughs> Do either of you have any benefits in a desert like environment? Um Greg definitely does not. He's more of an urban environment type. Yeah, no? Yeah, no. Just straight survival oh. checks. Let me know what you got. <laughs> oh. My very first roll of the game is a one on my D20. But but I do have <laughs> I do have a plus eight in survival, so my Still total one. is nine. <laughs> What'd you get? I rolled a three. <laughs> and I have a plus two, so that makes a five survival. I think what what's happening is as usual, um, the goblin and the Yosoki are just arguing too much to really care about survival. <laughs> it, really, you're just naturally drawn at being an individual, uh, uh, Greg, mm-hmm. being an individual who kind of lives in small tunnels and ends up walking towards the light, you're just, without thinking about it, instinctively lead you and your friend towards the sun and just keep walking towards it. Mm-hmm. It's f- it beating down upon the front of you guys as you walk further and further into the autumn wastes. Ooh. This might be a short game. Fair <laughs> Bobby, quiet. Greg, follow his nose. Shouldn't we be following my nose? My nose is bigger. Shh. Don't tell me to be quiet. Tiny, tiny mouse, be quiet. My mouth is bigger. No, it's not. You're a goblin. Um, do I smell anything that might smell like food or landfill or dirt? A lot of dirt. A lot of dirt. It's a lot of sand. Uh... If he could have a smell. It's what you're smelling. Okay. You Greg. find anything yet, you great navigator? I pull out a piece of fruit. Where do you get those? And I throw it at him. <laughs> Have one! We might die out here. You don't want to be hungry. You watch as you throw the fruit at uh, at, at your friend's... <laughs> Flinch. <laughs> no, I was going to say... Was, His face. So you throw it at Flinch. And there are no insects that you can see around your area. Mm -hmm. However, because the food is not exactly in good quality, Mm -hmm. there were bugs in your pocket with the food. Yes. As the food slaps (laughs) Flinch's face and falls to the ground, you watch as the insect falls before it reaches the food and is dead in the sand. I look down at the dead bug. I look up at Flinch. Truce. What? Truce. 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 Stop this fighting is, with me! This is the best we've ever gotten along! Greg's <laughs> <laughs> uh, gonna yes, die fine, fine, in fine, the truth. desert Wait. with a fur ball yeah, and no yeah. Bessie! It's okay. We'll find another Bessie that you can wreck. Uh, we will! There'll be multiple Bessies. I'm sure of it. So, uh, where are you taking us? Looks like we're just following the sun. Um... Are you just following the sun? <laughs> uh, 
is bright. So. So what? Your moth? What? Yeah. And with that, we're <laughs> <laughs> as you're finishing the uh, the bandages <laughs> on your newly acquainted Vesk friends' heads, their uh, clip ticket back at the the sheriff's yeah. uh, station. You've been there for about an hour, and soon after, Bob wakes up from his nap, and he goes towards the gate, and what you expect to happen is that he grabs the gate and it doesn't open. As he grabs the gate, it opens effortlessly, and he just walks out of the building. What, he can leave? Uh, 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 come on, Bob? Is he probably, I don't know, is he a prisoner? Is he in jail? You should, if he's in jail, you should catch him. Uh, I mean, if he gets away, you, you were watching him. I'm gonna... Follow Bob out the door. Uh, Bob! Bob! I don't think you're supposed to leave! <laughs> <laughs> it turns out, I, it's not like I'm going fire, trust me. It, the sheriff will know exactly where to find me. And he goes straight into the tavern. Did Butterfly the door? door swinging behind him. Did you leave the door open? His gate, yes. Yours is a separate cage gate. It's, two, it's like two, uh, clip two was, cells clip with a bar was in there bandaging my them. head. When he, when he left after Bob, did he leave the door open? I am assuming I did it through the bars. Oh. Yeah. Because uh, I... Wasn't I into the, uh, as much wasn't as, into the cage. As much as... Did you uh, try your door? Yep. It is locked. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you get the feeling that, that Bob has a bit of a, of a free card here. <laughs> Town drunk and all. That, yeah. Bond is probably just insanely bored. <laughs> yeah. He needs something to do. Uh, what else is there to do in this Since town? I'm in a predicament where I'm not exactly sure what I'm supposed to do, because all I do is really heal people and like my tea and coloring, I'm going to say I'm going to follow Bob into the tavern. No, I'm going to know what to do. I'm going to go back in and get my medical stuff. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. So I suppose I'm kind of done with you. you know, Bonda said he had some, something going on. He was going, he was going after. Who? He might. It, Bonda? Oh, yeah, Bonda, right? Really, really, like, yeah, little, the sheriff dude. dude. Yes. Yeah. No. So he, he had something going on. If you, uh, if you, if you let me out, I can track him down for you. See if he's got uh, some, some needs help with whatever he was looking into. Roll a persuasion check, just for the hell of it. I just want to see what happens. <laughs> uh, what's persuasion? Yeah, diplomacy. Mm-hmm. Thinking of our <laughs> other game. Straight charisma. Ooh, that's an eight. Uh. And my charisma modifier is a zero, so it's an eight. <laughs> We're off to a good start. You watch as she says these words, and then her her lizardy lips make this twitchy curl as if to try and very clearly force a smile that is about as genuine as Bob sobriety. Whatever you're trying to do with your face, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Right. But, like, seriously... You're pretty. You're pretty important in this town, and I, I'd hate to see Vonda go without uh, whatever help you do for him. Clearly, you don't know what his status as is important in this town. What is important in this town? What is this town? What is this planet? This is seriously like, why do you live here? You know, you. Why does anybody live here? Annoy me. That if you leave this town, ah, I'd be ah, happy ah, to help you. I can do that. I'm, but I clearly can't go out. Like there's, there's, so, there's, 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 there's at this point, when she when she says, I, "You clearly annoy me," uh, the front door is thrown open, and Bonda is walking in. But in his hands, in front of him, there is a like I said, he's he's a short individual. He's about uh, maybe five and a half feet tall. He's uh, but what he's got in his hands is a uh, a woman with her arms cuffed behind her back, uh, kind of not forcibly struggling, but kind of like disgruntled scuffling. And it's like, oh, come on. Uh, she's got her hair like kind of pulled over to one side. She's a human, which is one of the most notable things that you uh, acknowledge right off the gate. Hair's all pulled off to one side, relatively short. Uh, he's got a gun belt in his other hand and her by the cuffs in the in the, his opposite hand. And looks, she goes... Oh, yeah, I guess it's afternoon. I suppose it makes sense that Bob's no longer here. Here, get in there. And he throws her into Bob's vacant cell, closes the door, and goes to turn and walk away and then goes, oh, right, and then grabs a key, blows the dust off of it, and locks the door with her inside. And uh, you now have a neighbor in your cellmate. And he goes, all right, uh, I'm going to need a couple extra pairs of hand. You mind coming with me, uh, the ecliptic? 
Uh, I can be of any assistance you need. Yes, sir. Fantastic. Good job on the on the lizard scalp, by the way. It's, it looks lovely. I'm sure she'll make a full recovery. The two of them leave, leaving. Where are just... you going? Is there something? Is there something cool? What's happening? Door closes. Hello. 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 Stupid Bonda. Yo. Uh, she just sits there on the cot there, looking relatively calm given the circumstances. What are you here for? Try to get the ship. Any luck? Now I'm in a jail cell. Well, I'm in a jail cell, so I'm going to mm. go with no. Well, is it a good ship? It's one of my older ships. Your ships? Yeah, I uh, I got a, I got a couple of ships that I use, and uh, I heard I got wind that one of them was stolen a while back, and uh, kind of made its way here. So. Mm. I'm here to retrieve what's mine, but apparently the the garage operator that runs the garage out of this fine little place uh, didn't like me infringing upon his score, quote unquote. Jerk. Yeah. But, uh, nah, just uh, probably later on tonight. I'll uh, I'll just pick it up and fly it out of here. It'll be fine. Sounds good. Let me know if you need a hand with that. What are you in for? Throwing a guy through a window. Perfect. And with that, <laughs> an extra couple of hours have passed, and the autumn wastes seem to be getting larger and larger. The pillar of black smoke nowhere to be seen, as the two of you fight to stay on your two legs as opposed to crawling on all fours. <sighs> uh, we getting anywhere yet? What? Are you just... Where are we going? Oh. You're the tracker. I'm I not, think. Not the tracker. Well, you, do you do stuff like that, don't you? You're a goblin. No. It's not words. <laughs> well, I say just we just keep going. Eventually we should hit into something or die. I want you to both roll constitution checks. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Liz. Is that just a straight up constitution Sorry, check? Yeah, no, four, or, fortitude. Fortitude. Check. Yeah, okay. Fortitude. I have a twelve total for dear Grec. Okay. I have a sixteen total for right. dear Flinch. So, mm. you, Flinch, you keep on stepping forward, and as you say that last thing, look behind you, and the goblin's just face first <laughs> in the dirt. <laughs> oh. Oh boy. Fair enough. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over and check on. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Just. Uh, better to check real quick. A 17 total. Okay. Um, it, it, you probably wouldn't have guessed too far off of it. It obviously is dehydration. There is no water between the two of you. Um, the only fruit or food that has had is in Greg's pockets, and all the insects that have been feeding off of the rotten matter have died from heat stroke. <laughs> and do you plan to leave her or take her? Oh, of, take of course her? I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't leave my dear friend, the goblin who got us lost in the desert and crashed our ship. Um, <laughs> No, strength yes. check, please. <laughs> yes, uh, but right before I get down to start picking it up, I'm going to uh, activate the communicator in my custom rig, which is sort of like my cyber deck, you know, my type of mm -hmm. thing, and see if I can pick up any channels whatsoever. I was too busy arguing to pay attention before, or if it works yeah, that yeah, way. Yeah. And it's, uh, so what is it again? You have a... I have a communicator. A comms, a comms unit that's built into my. So you're basically just gonna kind of like call out openly to whoever is listening. Yeah, like cool. sc scan some channels. What's that... your what's your open signal message gonna be? Yeah, so uh, we're on a crash ship and uh, we started wandering to try to get somewhere, and uh, uh, we're dying out here in the desert. You say that and you follow. Me. You clip tick. Yeah. Uh, you head on over to. There's one large garage at the south end of town. Uh, you're aware that the intention of the garage when in, in its original building was so that, you know, there would be vessels that could dock here to explore out into the autumn waste for people who realized that it was a waste of time and space. <laughs> and um, there's very little in the way of anything in this place anymore. Uh, the sheriff, Sheriff Bonda, has his own um, small like sheriff uh, hovercraft that he can use to get to the larger city this couple of days south of this city okay. this town but when you head on in there there is uh that little scuttle craft that he have but there has the, but there is also a a medium-sized starship 
that's relatively new with a couple of cables and wires that have been hooked up to another, uh, like a bit of a small rig that this guy has for salvage. And uh, there's an Android that's up top that's that's hoisting down a few things with a couple of uh, SROs he has with him, working down the the, ga the gears and the cranes to lower the ship down off of the hovercraft that he went to go and salvage it off of. Nice. <clears throat> Why, Panda, did you get a raise? Is that supposed to be a literal joke because they're raising the ship over my head? Are you trying a whole humor act? Never mind. Okay. What do you need my assistance with? There's ships raining all over the place past a couple of days. 24 over there went and found a ship that crashed, landed a little bit uh, due east of here. But there's another one that crashed, a smaller one that crashed a little bit over there. And, uh, and then he kind of like pops his ear to the side. And he tweaks a little antenna sticking out of his ear. And now there's an SOS around that location. So if you wouldn't mind hopping in the scuttlecraft, I'm assuming that there might be somebody with some, I need some medical help. Hop out in. And you know what? We might get some salvage today too. I wouldn't mind building something that's not made of wood. Fair enough. I shall come with you, sir. Uh, excellent. All right. So the two of you hop in the scuttlecraft. Yeah. Years have passed. <laughs> you are feeling wrinkles in places you thought you would never feel wrinkles as a Yasoki. You sit there laying on your back, baking in the hot desert sun. This is truly the end of days. You look over to your friend. I want you to roll a, uh, uh, a willpower check. Oh, a willpower saving throw? Yeah, saving throw, please. Six. Oh. <laughs> look over at Greg. Is he gonna eat me? Possible. <laughs> oh no. I mean, she hasn't moved in years. Meats might still be good. Uh, what, what I've been eating, the meat's definitely not good. <laughs> so I, I roll over a little bit toward and just start poking Greg <laughs> in the face, mm -hmm. just poking. Hey, hey, you, you, wake up. I'm, I'm going to do something sketchy. Just wake up. <laughs> <laughs> please, At this point, wake up. you feel a coldness above you. This shadow stretches over <laughs> Take me the top of you. <laughs> and you look up and all you see is the shape of a head. Some black formless form standing over you. It very well could be death physically here to finally take you after all of the things you've done. <laughs> take me, Death! Take me! Leave my goblin friend! <laughs> and you and Vonda stand there looking at a goblin face first in the dirt, <laughs> uh, a rat that's laid over that's looking like it's beginning to shrivel up, and it's sitting there and just clamoring as if you were Death incarnate. Are these species natural to this planet? <laughs> um, if it ain't dust, it ain't natural to this planet. It's a funny looking thing. I'll start poking the, the rat. <laughs> Death starts poking you. <laughs> I, st I still think there's a bit of a way to go before I get before I'm cooked enough. <laughs> Leave me alone. Oh, you're so nice and fine. Here. Give, uh, can I give I'm some dying. <laughs> can you give him what? Give some water. <laughs> By all means. Yeah, so I start giving you some water. <laughs> all right. You start drinking with man. This is the nicest death you've ever heard. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna go and attend to the goblin. I'm gonna roll her as well as I can onto her back. <laughs> All right, uh, just humor me. Roll a medicine check, please. Oh, okay, that's eight and seven, so fifteen. All right, so you you wake her up or you roll her over. Ah, oh, just dehydration. It's she's just taking a nap. So you pour some water down her gullet, and. Uh, Oh. What? Hello. I look around and see if uh, Flinch is there. <laughs> Flinch is there. Looking sketchy as all hell. Am I able to sit up? Yes. Yeah, so yeah. I'm sitting up and I'm looking over and I'm like, oh, I'm so. You're not death. Why would you assume that? Well, did. did, did yeah, you know. Because you're big and... Chitness. Buggy and and pointy and... Well, you don't look so good yourself. <laughs> Thank you very much. I agree with death. 
Greg is having a bad day. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah, uh, who, who, who are you? Well, I'm just here to help. Why are you in the middle of nowhere? Uh, probably has something to do with that crashed ship all the way over there, I'm assuming. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> ship, uh, yeah. It almost hit us. <laughs> We walked the whole way. I want <laughs> both of you to roll lie as hell checks. <laughs> In this game, they're known as bluff checks. Uh-oh. That's, that's charisma based. Yay! <laughs> You're both gonna just bomb it. Ooh, oh, or not. oh, oh. So I have a total of 22 for Greg. Oh. Wow. Rolled a 17. What do you get? On my Seven. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at this Yusoki, you're not you're not unfamiliar with Yusoki's uh, <laughs> okay. cryptic. Yeah, no, he definitely came from the ship. The goblin, however, you haven't really seen many in your lifetime. It's very possible the goblin, in fact, lives in the desert. It's smiling, big rows of pointy teeth. <laughs> it's amazing how you must have survived out here all this time. You, on the other hand, definitely came from that ship. <laughs> Greg has stamina like you've never seen, and he picks up one of the dead bugs that's in the sand from the fruit, and he just pops it into his mouth. It tastes like sand. <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Bonda kind of looks at you guys. All right, well, I'm, maybe I'll make a second trip out to the ship later, but probably should get these guys to some semblance of civilization. Food. That would be fine. Yeah, food. Food, food. food would be good. Food. 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 All right. food. food. Donuts. Food. Food. Yeah. Mm, none ah. of that moldy fruit. Well, it, I can't guarantee there's donuts, and I definitely can't guarantee there's not mold. But, uh, onto the skiff. Okay. I assist them getting on to make sure they don't fall oh. over. I make it. <laughs> the, goblin, the goblin moves pretty quickly and manages to jump up there on his own, and he's inside before you even notice he's got I make it a little around. difficult. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm sort of like, my, and my tail is flapping around, and I'm like, Meh. Oh, I'm so weak and tired. Delirious even didn't know what I was saying. <laughs> Greg sticks his head out of the shuttle and is like, Eh! Food! I keep pulling you towards the ship, eventually difficultly pushing you up <laughs> onto the shuttle. My, you're very heavy for a small thing. <laughs> Greg takes a hold of his collar once he's kind of getting up there and just starts undelicately sh- pulling him in. <laughs> Into the shuttle by yeah, his I, collar. Yeah, so just I roll off over inside the shuttle. I'm just like, oh. Mm, mm. Just lay in there. I just <laughs> lay in the bottom. I just lay. And right, Bonda gets to the, the, the pilot's chair and starts heading back over to Hobbs' shore with the three of you in tow. Back in the back in the jail cells, it's just you and your new female uh, roommate. What's your name, by the way? Uh, they call me, uh, call me Farah. Laurel. Laurel? Yeah. That's a rather... I mean, don't take this the wrong way. I can't think of other names. It's a, it's a rather nice name for a Im- Imperial like yourself. I kind of give her a glare. Most Vesk I've met are rather hearty and terrifying in nature. and I'm sure you are as well, but you have a very soft nature and name about you. My mom's name was Honey. Honey, as in... So your ship. Your ship that's uh, got stills mm-hmm. and is, is here. What, what kind of ship are we talking about? Uh, cargo vessel. I have. I try not to advertise too much about it, but uh, I have a bit of... Uh, I run my own little operation. I got a couple of crews that work with me. I got a mm-hmm. uh, few ships that go out and take care of multiple jobs. It's a business expert enterprise. As you see. And uh, like I said, I lost one a little while ago. All hands on board with it. Um, to got crash word in that, here? Because this, this, this is not a great place to crash. I, it could have crashed. I have the feeling at some point it got stolen. And unfortunately, I believe that uh, poor employee employees that were on the ship may have regrettably perished. They were rather expensive individuals. But um, I don't like having to go and spend money on a ship if I could find the ship that was lost in the first place. So I'm here to reclaim my fourth ship, and, uh, well, like I said, the android ship right here is not exactly forgiving or foregoing with, uh, his fine, quote-unquote. Hmm. 
I don't know. I'm always, I'm always a bit uh, suspicious of androids who think too much of themselves. Let's, uh, let's, I don't know, if you're just wondering how it would have got dumped here, if it's a pretty good ship, whoever stole it would want to keep it. <laughs> That's the one who stole it was uh, an idiot that doesn't deserve having his own ship. I don't know. All I know is that it's here, and uh, I'm going to be flying home with it later today. How are you getting out of here? Gonna wait until I know the sheriff ain't coming back. He'll be gone a while. He's off uh, doing some sort of rescue mission, mission with Clippy. Well, yeah, he, uh, he likes drinking, yes? And pretty much everyone does in this town. Well, when he goes to the bar, I will uh, slip past the bar to the ship, and away I go. And the cage... Say, you looking for a job? Yep. Hmm. Uh, correction, my name is Captain Farah Argus. Pleased to meet you. She puts her hand to the bars. Like, give her a shake. <clears throat> It'll be nice to have a Vesk on board again. Hey. All right, just wait. Good things come to those who wait. And she kicks back and rests on the... Rather comfy cot compared to your thin, spring-broken mattress. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, as you guys are heading back to town, the rest of you individuals, um, as you begin heading into town, there is this... I want you all to roll perception checks really quick, please. Mm -hmm. You too will have a minus two to your perception just because of the state oh, you're currently well, that's... in. For uh, Cliptic and sorry, not for Cliptic, for, for Greg and Flinch, you have minus two. So what are the scores you guys got? Greg has eight in total. Um, 24. Oh. 21, even with the minus two. Ooh. Holy shit. <laughs> All right. Um, Greg, you're just laying on the floor enjoying the cold f uh, metal against your skin. Mm -hmm. Flinch, while you're laying down, you kind of sit up as you hear a... And you're kind of looking around. You hear the same thing as well, Cliptic. You look around and then you see a bit of a shadow followed almost immediately by a ship that flies overhead and is headed towards Hov Shore at a bit of a faster clip than your current skiff. My goodness. what What is that? It's, it's a ship. Well, I get that. But oh, I wasn't sure. Thanks. Um, Bond Bonda, are we expecting somebody here? Uh, we're never expecting anybody. We weren't expecting you when you showed up. Thanks, by the way. Medic is good, but uh, no. No, we're not planning on any particular visitors. Can, do we recognize anything on the ship? Like <coughs> symbols, names, anything? Um... <clears throat> When you look out the window, Flinch, you see the ship, it kind of sparks a conversation and you nudge Grek to take a look at it. Mm -hmm. And Grek, when you take a look, the the ship that's flown by does look relatively familiar for you. It's um, It belongs to a particular gang that you worked with before owned by Boru Guy. We're not going to town. Whoa, why? Um, what did you do now? What did you do now? Greg did nothing. Greg did nothing. But, but ship owner might not like Greg. But, but not due to Greg's own fault. That's usually the way of it, isn't it? Nah. No. Nah. What did you do? Nothing. Uh, okay, so bad person in ship? Yes. Is that what I'm getting? Yes. Bad, okay. bad, bad. So, uh, all bad. Ba ba ban ban do what what what's your what's your name again? It's Banda. Gee. Oh, okay, Mister Apostrophe. Uh, so we shouldn't go to town. They're bad people. They're really bad people. And Greg it scares just, a goblin. Greg's a goblin. just sitting there and he's shaking his head back and forth. No. I, I don't know no. if you've all been in the desert recently, but it's not exactly hospitable out there. And all the beer is back in town, so we're going to town. I would like the two of you to roll. Uh, diplomacy checks. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Living up to my character. Oh my. 
Ooh. I rolled a natural 20, which is good because I have plus zero on my checks for diplomacy. <laughs> What'd you get? Three. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. We're likable people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, well, you are today. <laughs> flinch. As you begin to realize the gravity of the situation, you grab onto Bonda's chair and you're like, we can't go! And you're just kind of like shaking him. He's like, what the? Get off of me! Uh, but when he looks over to you after pushing you off the chair, there is legitimate fear in your eyes. And with the lack of now toothy grin, Bonda actually puts on the brakes and stops the, the, the skiff and slowly and with his own look of terror looks towards the, the town that he's supposed to be protecting and is not quite in. Thank you for listening to this Twisted Gears Studios production. Our next episode of Spacers will air Tuesday, October 30th. In the meantime, Tuesday, October 23rd is the first episode of The Call, GM'd by Derek Snow. And Friday, October 26th is the next episode of our collaboration podcast with MacGuffin Media, The Legend of Zingdong. The game system used today was the Starfinder game system by Paizo. Music in this episode was licensed through Video Copilot. Sound effects and ambient tracks licensed through Triune Films and Video Copilot. For up-to-date content, please subscribe to the Twisted Gear Studios YouTube channel. You can find Twisted Gear Studios on Facebook and SoundCloud, as well as Twitter and Instagram, at The Twisted Gear. Your players this evening were Janessa Coles, Lindsay Delansky, Derek Snow, and Elizabeth Wells. Your audio operator tonight was Rob Hickey, and I was your host and GM, Zach Barrett. If you were in the Fort McMurray area and can If you were in the Fort McMurray area, you can find me at Tavern on Main every Monday at 7.30 p.m. for trivia. For the month of October, all lightning rounds are themed after a popular horror movie franchise. Have a good end everyone, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>